11 nostalgic full moon features movies that are really good. We all love some occasional light-hearted entertainment, the kind that the finest of B-movies provide. Those who have enjoyed this guilty pleasure over the years are well acquainted with the name Full Moon Features. This American motion picture production and distribution company has been in the business for over 30 years now, and their legacy has delighted us with some amazing low-budget hits across genres like horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. Started by the B-movie veteran Charles Band, Full Moon Features delivered a smashing hit right at the start. The business was booming until 1995, when the direct-to-video market was losing its popularity. Thereafter, they diversified their strategy and continued to survive while others in the trade were succumbing to the downfall in the market. They do have some disastrous movies that are an absolute waste of time, but in this video, we bring together some of their best works that are good enough to de-stress after a long day. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> Puppet Master, 1989. A puppet maker, Andre Toulon, was the best in the business. One day he chanced upon an old Egyptian formula that allowed him to grant life to his puppets. When the Nazis planned to use his idea to fulfill their evil plans, he shot himself before the secret could be stolen. Many years later, a psychic, Neil, discovers this secret and summons his four psychic friends. They arrive to find that Neil has killed himself, and soon the murderous puppets are unleashed on the group. The psychics are about to uncover some dark secrets of the Puppet Master. This is among the first works of Full Moon Features, and is much better than you would expect. While stories involving evil dolls and puppets are plentiful, Puppet Master adds a sinister twist to the tale. It is lightly inspired by an earlier Charles Band production titled Dolls. However, the puppets here are not essentially evil. They're almost sweet-looking tiny things that just happen to enjoy murdering people. And make no mistake, nobody can commit as gruesome murders as these little puppets. Even with a slow start, the movie picks up steam once the puppets begin their attacks. There are some gory moments and some gratuitous nudity, as is the norm for B-movies. But overall, it is quite an entertaining package that has a bit of everything. Actors like Paul Lamott and William Hickey are decent in their roles, and the success of this movie prompted a few sequels as well. It didn't become a cult classic for no reason, and you have to watch it to understand why. Head of the Family, 1996. A family of freakish, misshapen people target unsuspecting travelers and slaughter them for gruesome experiments. This family is psychically controlled by a man with a giant head on a tiny body. Lance and Loretta are having an extramarital affair, but they fear getting caught by Loretta's husband. They blackmail the weird family to get rid of the husband. However, things do not go according to plan, as the freakish family kidnaps Lance and Loretta to save their secrets. Whoever said cheesy movies can't be fun needs to watch this film. It is an entertaining horror flick that promises plenty of laughs along the way. The plot is crazy, and the characters are sketched in such a way that you can't take them seriously. This is B-movie fun at its best, but if it isn't enough for you, then you can always watch it for the beautiful Jacqueline Lavelle who plays the role of Loretta, the cheating wife. The women drop their clothes at the slightest temptations, and it's quite a treat for the viewers. 
There are some horrifying moments, such as when the head of the family with his three-foot tongue slobbers all over Loretta. Nudity overshadows everything else in the movie, but it still has its moments in some creepy and funny scenes. Don't go in expecting some Shakespearean classic, and you won't be disappointed. Robot Jocks, 1989. Robot Jocks is premised in a futuristic world after a deadly nuclear war. The superpowers have forsaken war and handled disputes in a different way, where each pitches a giant robot to fight another from the opposing side. When the territory of Alaska is being contested, Achilles is the pilot for the American robot, while the opposing Russian forces is the ruthless Alexander. Moreover, a traitor is feeding them information to make things even more difficult for the Americans. Can they still overcome the obstacles in the battle for Alaska? One of the trademark features of Full Moon Features is that they manage to maintain the big-budget realism with very little money. This film is a great example of their skills with a unique story. It's a great package for a B-movie. You have some interesting fight sequences that have been accomplished with finesse, and the miniature filming is top-notch. The space fighting scene is sure to amaze you, and we appreciate the fact that they added no sound to make things realistic in this scene. However, just to add to the quirky factor, there are moments when a giant chainsaw comes out of the robot's crotch. The special effects deserve a mention for being impressive despite the budgetary shortcomings. Stuart Gordon, the director, initially had plans of roping in Van Damme for the role of Achilles, but settled for Gary Graham instead. With powerful acting performances and some jaw-dropping action scenes, this is a fun movie to check out for the B-movie fans. <laughs> Ghoulies, 1985. When Jonathan was a child, his father Malcolm almost ended up killing him while performing a satanic ritual. Many years later, with no memory of his childhood life, Jonathan moves in with his girlfriend, and they move to his father's mansion after inheriting it. During a party, he unknowingly performs a ritual that was mentioned in his father's book and the joke turned into a nightmare when his actions released small demonic creatures called ghoulies. This movie has some shocking similarities with Gremlin, but it also has the cheesy and campy narrative that you would expect from a Charles Band production. The poster of the movie is a giveaway of what is about to come, and with a nonsensical plot and some miserable acting performances, all you will enjoy is the silliness of it all. 80s movie fans will love some of the cliché scenes and the exciting body count. The pesky ghoulies look cheap and are hardly intimidating, but it is fun to watch them go on a rampage. The scene where Malcolm rises from his grave is a striking moment in the movie, and the camera work makes it a worthwhile experience. Ghoulies was initially supposed to be a 3D movie, but the plan was dropped due to the complexities associated with the filming. If you're up for a campy monster flick, Ghoulies might just be the one for you. Hideous, 1997. Medical oddities have been a source of fascination and often inspired horror flicks. In this movie, some sewage workers discover a deformed and discarded fetus. Three prominent collectors of such medical oddities compete for possession. However, trouble starts brewing when they are locked in a mansion and the fetus, along with other hideous things in the collection, come back to life. To enjoy this movie, you must have a taste for cheesy horror films. The story is intriguing, and some interesting angles to the characters add to the interest to the viewer. While many might see the deformed creatures as the villain, the real baddies are the collectors. They collect such specimens to bolster their own personal collection when these are supposed to be studied for scientific purposes. Even when they discover that the fetuses are alive, they don't abandon their madness. From funny one-liners to some action-packed moments, the movie never fails to entertain. 
full moon features have worked their way across some puppet-based thrillers, and Hideous is another addition to the list. The topless scene with the gorilla mask is hilarious, and many other sequences in this film are enough to inspire a laugh riot. With the presence of Jacqueline Lavelle, you can be assured of some random nudity. The 90s haven't been kind to such movies, but somehow, this one has been loved by the fans. You discredit the Inquisition. I prefer God's holy will. <laughs> the Pit and the Pendulum, 1991. This movie is premised during the times of the Spanish Inquisition, when a baker's wife, Maria, doesn't like what's happening. She's branded a witch and arrested for speaking out. An evil monk and the Grand Inquisitor, Torquemada, has some horrific plans for her where he wants to torture her in the worst ways possible, including cutting out her tongue. Her husband is her only hope as he tries to free her from his evil clutches. The director is none other than the famous Stuart Gordon, the man behind cult classics like Reanimator and From Beyond. You can expect some fireworks yet again as he delivers with a story that will latch onto you from the very first scene. The way the movie begins is pretty grisly and cold-hearted, enough to give you a hint of what is about to come. We don't say it often for a B-movie, but the cast here is amazing and the likes of Lance Henriksen and Rana De Ricci put on quite a show. Unlike the usual B-movies from Full Moon Features, this film has a concrete story based upon a short story by the legendary Edgar Allan Poe. The makers ensure that the atmosphere and settings are top-notch, right from the scenes in the castle to the depiction of the times during the Spanish Inquisition. The cinematography and sets steal the show. If you have a thing for fantasy historical content, this movie might be a surprise package for you. <laughs> Pre-Hysteria, 1993 It's pretty rare to find a decent dinosaur movie among the B-movies. A young boy and his family stumble upon some mysterious eggs. As they nurture them to make them hatch in their backyard, a brood of baby dinosaurs emerge. When an evil and opportunistic museum curator wants the creatures for his collection, the young boy has to protect the innocent dinosaurs. Prehysteria is the kind of adorable feel-good movie that can lighten up your mood irrespective of the situation. For those who like a family-oriented comedy involving cute animals and creatures, this film is an absolute treat. Instead of the gigantic deadly dinosaurs, here you will find lifelike miniature dinosaurs that are fun to watch. While the special effects are not out of this world, they are decent for a low-budget movie. Charles Band, the man behind Full Moon Features, was in charge of the direction and was also helped by his father, Albert Band, for some of the scenes. This film was quite a hit among the kids and was followed by two sequels. Our advice would be to enjoy this fun movie without picking on the shortcomings. Dr. Mordred, 1992. Anton Mordred may seem like a normal landlord and lecturer, but he has a secret identity. He lives in New York City, where his neighbor is the beautiful Samantha Hunt, but he is a powerful sorcerer who's living in a human form for a purpose. The purpose is soon revealed, as an evil sorcerer, Cabal, plans on destroying the Earth. Jeffrey, or Dr. Mordred, is all that stands between him and destruction. This appealing fantasy feature was conceived by the founding father of Full Moon Features, Charles Band. He had even planned a sequel for this film, but it never really worked out. The use of visual effects has been kept minimal, and yet the striking design is impressive. But you're not supposed to take this sci-fi mini superhero flick too seriously. The hilarious blue cape and suit will make you laugh every single time. While it never had a theatrical release, this straight-to-video flick has managed to entertain the fans back in the day. 
The performances of Jeffrey Combs and Brian Thompson are enjoyable, while Yvette Nippar sets the screen on fire with her breathtaking appearance. There are some extreme moments, such as the sacrifice scene. But without these, Dr. Mordred could have been a magical experience for the kids. Yes, it is a bizarre plot, but then what do you expect from a famous B-movie franchise? <laughs> Oblivion, 1994. The story is set in the year 3031. When, on a distant planet, a weird gang of desperados kill the Marshal and set off chaos. The Marshal's son fights these evil forces to take back the reign of his father. The baddies are led by a strange-looking lizard man called Red Eye, and the battle heats up when the powers clash. We never recommend getting drunk, unless, of course, you have to watch Oblivion. It is undoubtedly a fun movie to watch, but only when you know it isn't meant to be a classic. The flimsy story is coupled with some cheap special effects and the terrible costumes to make a hilarious show. However, all criticisms aside, remember that this movie was made over 20 years before Cowboys and Aliens. So, despite the laughable content, it did inspire future movies that became a huge hit with the audiences. Oblivion has some entertaining action sequences involving spaceships, cool gadgets, guns, and cyborgs. The green alien lizard man with an eye patch makes for an exciting villain, and as you know, the battle between good and evil is always fun to watch. Although there were some initial plans to release this movie into the theaters, the makers eventually settled for a straight-to-video release. The only way you can sit through this movie is if you are prepared to wallow in the cliches and goofiness of the storytelling. Mama! Mama! Freak, 1995. A troubled family inherits a 12th century castle in Italy and come to stay there. But there is something off-putting and strange about the castle. There are some unexplained noises, and every now and then you can find broken objects. The young daughter of the family also claims that a nocturnal visitor haunts her in her bedroom. Things take a turn for the worse when the housekeeper and a local prostitute are discovered murdered in the dungeons. The family has to uncover the castle's dark secret to prove their innocence in the murders. If you had a dollar for every time a movie was made about a scary castle, you would be a millionaire. Castle Freak is another such effort, but this time it's Stuart Gordon behind the camera. Starring horror icon Jeffrey Combs, the movie strikes out with its intelligent narrative that inspires suspense and fear at the same time. A gothic atmosphere is maintained all through the movie, and some of the scenes are too gory for the faint heart. The horrifying moments are magnified by some outstanding makeup skills. The Italian locations, castles, and clever use of props make the scenes stand out. It's probably among the few serious flicks by Full Moon Features. There's something essentially Lovecraftian about the story, and if you have admired his works, you will love Castle Freak. <laughs> Subspecies 1991. Radu is an evil vampire who killed his father for the magical bloodstone. He comes back to his hometown after several years in exile and sets his eyes upon some girls who are doing some research on Romanian culture. Luckily for the girls, they have an unlikely protector, a good vampire who happens to be Radu's half-brother. The action intensifies as the good and evil vampires face off in a deadly battle. Vampire B-movies are in abundance, and subspecies is nothing out of the box. It's just that the cheesy, corny storyline will manage to bring a smile to your face. There are some errors, such as the terribly awkward animation to depict Radu's demonic minions, 
However, these flaws make the movie hilarious, as does the unreal action sequences. The mandatory gore and nudity will appeal to the high school crowd, and you will love the wonderful medieval locations in Romania. The character of Radu is more of an homage to Nosferatu, and his raspy voice adds to the colorful character. He is how a vampire should be, evil and unapologetic about his actions. Watch out for the cemetery festival scene, where Radu slowly approaches the camera and reveals his face for the world to see. There are a hundred reasons to trash this film, but we still feel that it's better than the pretentious vampire flicks like Twilight. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.